Director Roland Emmerich is back, and this time, he's going to make the moon fall. This review is brought to you by Stamps.com. Head over to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the promo code MERL for special offers, including a free trial and postage. And stay tuned after this review for more info. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my review of Moonfall. A little bit delayed because we've had some winter weather here in Arkansas, but I was able to get to the theater today to see it. I have another review coming up, hopefully tomorrow or maybe later today, for Jackass Forever, which I'm very excited about seeing. But first, let's talk about Moonfall. It is from director Roland Emmerich. The script is from Roland Roland Emmerich, along with his 10,000 BC and 2012 co-writer Harold Closer and first-time collaborator Spencer Cohen, this is Emmerich's first film since 2019's Midway and his first global disaster film since 2016's Independence Day Resurgence. And here's the thing about Roland Emmerich, he doesn't care about critics. He hasn't had a critical hit in over two decades. His last fresh movies on Rotten Tomatoes is 2000's The Patriot. So any discussion about critics or critical consensus is almost beside the point with this film because Roland Emmerich is not looking to win over critics with his movies. If the moon really is what you think it is, we're gonna need a mega structurist. Suit up. However, even given that, for a brief shining moment in Moonfall, for all of its dumbness, this movie threatened to win me over. A lot of times there is a crowd when a movie like Moonfall comes out that kind of would look at a critic like me who might give it a bad review and say, well, what would you expect? About an hour into this movie, I was shaking my head, I was chuckling to myself, and that interior monologue in my head started talking and saying like, well, you know, this isn't that great, but it's kind of self-aware about what it is in a lot of ways. Maybe this could be the kind of thing where I just throw my hands up and say, you know what, why not? What the hell? However, then the last hour of the movie happened, and I'm quite comfortable in saying, no, this is not a very good film. One thing Moonfall gets an A-plus in is clarity of premise. In fact, to satisfy its audience, it needs to make only one thing happen. The moon has to fall. This is maybe the most straightforward promise to an audience since John Woo's face-off back in 1997. Unfortunately, Emmerich over-delivers on this promise to a spectacular degree, dragging the movie down to earth along with the moon. Game of Thrones' John Bradley plays a conspiracy theorist and amateur astronomer who discovers that the moon has left its orbit and is on a collision course with Earth. Halle Berry plays a NASA administrator who has to recruit her former crewmate, a washed-up astronaut played by Patrick Wilson, to blast off, save the Earth, and get the moon back where it belongs. And if the movie had stuck to that simple premise with those main characters, like I said, I think I may have just sort of given up and said, Ugh, why not? Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson, John Bradley mostly seem to know what kind of movie they're in. I'm not cleared for this. Well, I'm the acting director of NASA, so I just cleared you. Congrats. Yeah, but you said you always wanted to be an astronaut. I have debilitating anxiety. But this is a Roland Emmerich film, and Roland Emmerich's villain in every single one of his films isn't the planet Earth or aliens, it's simplicity. He's never met a side character or a side plot that he didn't jam into the movie unnecessarily, and this one is no different. So of course this movie is also littered with various family members and acquaintances, none of whom we care about in any real way, all of whom Emmerich cuts away to at critical moments when the film actually starts to get interesting. Emmerich even literally wheels out Hollywood legend Donald Sutherland to give one non-sequitur exposition-heavy monologue, then he literally rolls him off screen, never to be seen, heard from, or referenced again. Of course, this is nothing new. Moonfall plays like a greatest hits collection. So many different notes that he's hit before, even action sequences. There's a driving sequence in this movie that is very similar to a driving sequence that he did in, in one of his previous films, 2012. But even more so than all of those films, it suffers from the fact that he can't let a simple premise like Moonfall stand on its own. This is such a simple premise that the title of the film is technically a 
complete sentence. Roland Emmerich also throws in so much crazy stuff. The moon is not only falling, it's also hollow, and it may have also been built by aliens. It definitely contains some kind of mystery power source. And oh, by the way, there's also some sort of nanobots that may be pushing the moon into the earth as some kind of a cosmic revenge. And that is just the start of the absolute lunacy that Roland Emmerich throws into this already crazy movie. I think there's a world where Moonfall works in its own dumb way. You have appealing actors as your main characters. Even scientifically, it's a pretty smart, dumb movie. And I have my own personal science correspondent, my partner Mara. She knows all of this stuff, and she was actually nodding her head a few times when certain scientific theories about gravity, etc. would show up. There's a nod to a famous Star Trek The Next Generation episode. At one point, a character says, do you know what a Dyson Sphere is? And I said, I absolutely know what a Dyson Sphere is is that's where they found scotty from the original series in the star trek the next generation episode relics an actual dyson sphere can you imagine the engineering skills needed to even design such a structure yeah i know it's pretty amazing this combination of smart science and dumb fun almost works, but Emmerich absolutely tanks it when he decides to take the movie in a direction that decides to ask some big questions, the metaphysical questions, the kinds of questions that you can only get real insight and answers to in a movie about the moon crashing into the planet Earth. As we got to the end of the movie, it felt like it was kind of like Prometheus for dummies, and that's really saying something because there were already a lot of dummies in the movie Prometheus. I tried I tried to like Moonfall. I really, really did. I tried to judge it on its own terms. As I mentioned, the what were you expecting crowd, I was expecting the moon to fall. And in that regard, technically, uh, it delivered on that. There are a lot of sequences where the moon basically acts like a serial killer. Like people will just be walking around and they're like, oh my God, look, it's the moon. And then crazy stuff happens. It's exactly what you would expect from a movie like this. But Emmerich tries to jam so much other stuff stuff into this film, not just side plots and side characters, but thematic stuff that has absolutely no place in a movie like this, that he tanks any hope that somebody might enjoy this on just a dumb level, and the fact that he's able to ruin a concept that's as easy to pull off as Moonfall may be the biggest disaster of all. So that is not a recommendation for me on Moonfall. If you like Roland Emmerich films, it has the sort of things that you've seen in many of his other movies. The worldwide destruction scenes are well done. Like I said, you have a charismatic group, particularly your main three actors. There are other actors that I really enjoy in this movie, like Michael Pena, that are useless, but they're there, so it's always good to see their faces on the screen. But overall, I think that Roland Emmerich's moon reach exceeded his moon grasp and he's instead trying to set up I think maybe a cinematic universe that this movie doesn't even come close to justifying I've got IBS irritable bowel syndrome mm. Thanks so much for watching my review of Moonfall, and I also want to thank today's sponsor, Stamps.com. As we are ramping up, coming out of the new year, getting back to our normal lives, getting back to work and spring weather, hopefully very soon, one thing that is often in short supply is time. And why should you waste time going to the post office to mail whatever it is you need, whether it's a package, whether it's a letter, anything at all, when you can simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail anywhere you want to send it. Once your mail is ready, you just schedule a pickup or drop it off yourself. You can do all of that stuff with stamps.com and you can get big discounts, including up to 40% off of post office rates and up to 62% off of UPS rates. Stamps.com is a no brainer because it saves you both time and money. It's got me doing things like looking to stuff like merch that I didn't do because of the time and money commitments for both. Because stamps.com makes things so easy, it's no wonder that nearly 1 million businesses are already using it. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead and there's no risk because with my promo code MURL M-U-R-R-E-L-L you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com click on the microphone on the top of the page and type in MURL M-U-R-R-E-L-L. That's stamps.com promo code MURL stamps.com 
never go to the post office again. I want to thank them for sponsoring this review, and I want to thank you for watching. And as I mentioned at the top of the review, stay tuned very soon for my take on Jackass Forever, which I think will be just as ridiculous as this movie, but intentionally so, and I can't wait to check it out. Stay safe out there. I'll see you very soon. Until next time.